Super Mario Galaxy is one of my favorite games of all time. Its soundtrack is still unrivaled by any other 3D Mario game, and the story and atmosphere hold up pretty damn well for a 2007 game. This game came out 15 years ago and it still looks about on par with some games released today. The game itself is also extremely fun for the most part. Hopping from planet to planet, using power-ups to power through a group of enemies or complete a puzzle, and generally just moving around, all exhilarating factors that make this game one of a kind, the movement especially. This game might not have some of the moves Mario has had in the past, namely the diving in Mario 64, and the weird belly-flopping move from Super Mario Sunshine, but I personally think that Super Mario Galaxy's main movement gimmick more than makes up for it with its sheer versatility, the spin. In fact, the aforementioned reasons as to why I think this game is so fun all include the spin in some way. The spin is truly what makes Super Mario Galaxy Super Mario Galaxy. So what if we remove it? Few people to my knowledge have actually asked this question, but they never bothered to answer it, likely because they either don't care or realize that there are way too many instances in this game where you just cannot avoid spinning. Good lord, just look at the first five minutes of this game. A crystal that needs to be spun in order to access a launch star that can only be activated by spinning. Then you have to spend multiple times just to make minuscule amounts of progress throughout the level. You just can't beat the game without spinning. But just because we can't lower something to zero doesn't mean we can't try to get that number as low as possible. How many spins does it take to complete Super Mario Galaxy? First and foremost, the rules. I'm going to be getting every star in Super Mario Galaxy in as little spins as possible. I'll be using the Nintendo Switch version of the game that comes with the now inaccessible for no good reason Super Mario 3D All-Stars Collection. Since I'm using the Switch version, spinning is mapped to a button, so there'll be no ambiguity as to what is and isn't a spin. Basically, it's just whatever uses X and Y. This includes things like throwing shells, using fireballs, going invisible with the use of the boom mushroom, etc. These we'll call gameplay spins. Launch stars will also be counted, but since those are our only method of transportation and almost always unskippable, I will be counting them separately, but still counting them nonetheless. For clarification, let's call a spin that activates a launch star a meta spin. Gameplay spins will be tracked with this star icon, and meta spins will be tracked with this large star icon. I'll also be playing as Luigi for his extra jump height. Most strategies presented in this video probably work with Mario, but I'm not about to go through every star twice just to see if this dickhead can handle it. If the footage shows me playing as Mario instead of Luigi, that's just for demonstration purposes to aid with what I'm saying, and is not part of the challenge itself. Every strategy here likely is possible in the original Wii version since the Switch re-release barely changed anything. One final note, I'll be going roughly in the chronological order that I obtain these stars, but I'll group together easier and more notable stars. With all that said and done, let's begin. Gateway Galaxy is the first area we arrive in, and likewise where we first obtain the spin. We can't get off this planet without using the launch star, so that's one spin to break open the crystal, and another to use the launch star. The next planet has a similar case. This time the crystal contains a star chip, which you need to collect five of to create a launch star. Thankfully, the other star chips are spin-free, allowing us to move to the next planet, and another sling star helps us reach the next one. Here we have to defeat Larjo over here to steal a key and unlock the final area, but the only two ways to defeat him involve either spinning into Larjo to stun him, or spinning into the stun pillar to stun Larjo. This is where we learn a crucial strategy to the minimum spin challenge. Star Bits are our savior. Star Bits essentially act as a spin, a much weaker spin, but a spin either way. This helps with stunning certain enemies like Larjo, but it unfortunately can't break crystals, so its uses are very niche outside of this challenge. Take out Larjo, and that's a pretty easy 5 spins for the tutorial stage, as we nab ourselves our first Grand Star. The first and only galaxy we can access right now is located in the Terrace, that being Good Egg Galaxy. This is where things start to really ramp up. The first mission is Dino Piranha. You can skip this Luma transforming into a Sling Star by triple jumping straight into this launch star up here, skipping a spin. One is required to get off the boulder planet, and now we come into contact with our first vine. Vines are tricky because to climb them, you need to repeatedly spin, which is bad for us since, you know, usually we would be able to avoid this problem by positioning ourselves right where the vine would spawn so we can travel with it as it grows. 
but in this introduction to vines, the game locks our movement to give us an informative cutscene of watching it grow without us. But if you position Luigi near these flowers and backflip, your momentum is ever so slightly carried over into the vine, and you can use a spin to reach the other side. Vines always require at least one spin, so I'm going to rank them in meta spins since they function as an aesthetically distinct launch star anyways. Proceed until you reach this prickly piranha. Instead of associating with such a hooligan, backflip onto this boulder launcher and backflip into the next planet's gravitational pull. You'll need one more launch star to get to Dino Piranha's boss arena. There's no way that I know of to damage Dino Piranha without spinning. Even the handy dandy star bits don't scratch this thing and that'll unfortunately be the case for most bosses. It takes four spins to defeat this thing. Be absolutely sure you don't miss a single one, that'll forfeit the level. The exact same applies to Dino Piranha speedrun, just on a time limit. That's nine spins. A snack of cosmic proportions has two crystal breaks and six launch stars. I'd recommend grinding for 100 star bits on the first planet, and be sure to take this launch star before you land on this boulder planet. The launch star here is encased in crystal and adds an additional spin. Other than that, Nothing of note here. 8 spins. King Caliente's battle fleet is a really spicy one. After landing on the palm tree planet, you'll notice a huge thorn bush and a few coconuts lying around. Smacking the coconuts requires a spin, which is required to kill the thorn bush to spawn a sling star to the next planet. Thankfully, today coconuts are optional, and you can triple jump to the next palm tree planet. The coconuts on this planet are not optional, as you must defeat a pokey this time, which is way more threatening than a thorn bush. You have to use the coconut today and take two launch stars. You might think this disc planet requires two spins due to the crystal, but this time we have an ace up our sleeve, this bullet bill. Bullet bills can break things that spins can without you needing to spin, which is cool. Break the crystal and you'll find yourself on the first real roadblock. There are two octopi guarding a bridge and the bridge won't lower until you defeat them. You need to spin coconuts to defeat them and therefore cannot lower the bridge. You might also notice, however, that these octopi not only spit out coconuts, but spicy coconuts as well. When touching anything fire-related in Super Mario Galaxy, Luigi will jump super high because he can't believe the sheer temperature of what he just touched. This is normally so lava isn't an instant kill object, as Luigi can rebound to the nearest safe land and retry a jump. We can exploit this high jump by waiting for the octopi to spit out a spicy coconut. Their coconuts always follow the pattern normal, normal, spicy. So wait for two normal coconuts, don't worry, they can't actually hurt you, and triple jump into a spicy coconut. If you do it correctly and don't die, you'll safely make it to the opposite airship with only a minor third degree burn. Break the crystal and make your way to the boss arena. King Caliente requires six spins to defeat, bringing the total spin count for this star up to 13. B. Luigi Takes Flight introduces, you guessed it, B. Luigi. B. Luigi has incredible movement capabilities even without spinning, so most of his star is easy. This dandelion looks like it could be trouble, but similar to Vines, your momentum is carried slightly when jumping into it, and by jumping near the top of the dandelion, it'll automatically fling you with no question. Then there's an actual vine we need to climb after killing this piranha plant. Luckily, we can skip this one. These honeycombs are our ticket out. When you climb on a honeycomb as B. Luigi, the game sort of creates an artificial gravity field, so to speak, so you can climb up the walls. This artificial gravity field can be exploited if you hover just close enough to the wall for the game to think you're sideways when you're actually not. Grab the star chips and fly to the star with three spins. The star platform is actually on the same planet as the starting area, so if you somehow manage to get up there, that's three spins saved, but I don't think even B. Luigi can get enough height to make it on top of this tree. So three spins it'll be for now. Trouble on the tower gives us our first taste of yet another crucial tactic for this run, slope climbing. Now you might be thinking, wait, don't you need to spin to slow climb? And to that I say, only if you're a nerd. There were two methods to slope climbing that I've seen documented at least. One has you facing away from a slope, jumping away from said slope, and spinning towards the slope again. The other involved you facing towards the slope and repeatedly spin. Both are not viable options here. Instead, here's a method which I believe to be previously undocumented that I'm going to coin front-facing slope climbing. And here's how it works. Normally when trying to run up a steep enough slope, Luigi will just slide off it. If you try jumping up the slope, Luigi will jump backwards, away from the slope. The way the game does this, I believe, is it just reverses the direction you're holding. So while this works for trying to jump up the slope, things break when trying to jump down the slope. That's right, by facing towards the slope, initiating a slide, and jumping away from the slope, 
the game will inadvertently push you up the slope instead, allowing us to skip an otherwise mandatory vine, walk up this weird divider thing, and take the normal path up to the launch star. You can skip the following sling star by doing a relatively easy triple jump, and from there, no more roadblocks. One spin. Big Bad Bugaboom isn't nearly as interesting, just take the launch star. Bugaboom is perfectly doable without spinning or dandelions. One spin. A good portion of galaxies in this game are these mini-galaxies. Oftentimes they are composed of only one planet, and usually don't require any spins. Such galaxies include Flip Switch Galaxy, Loop De Loop Galaxy, Rolling Green Galaxy, and Matter Splatter Galaxy. Some mini-galaxies are accessed through Hungry Lumas, which transform into an entire mini-galaxy and a launch star, so all these mini-galaxies require a meta spin to even attempt them. Later in the game, you also unlock the Trial Galaxies, which takes one launch star to get to the Trial Planet and another to actually get to a Trial Galaxy. So all in all, there are 15 meta spins in the observatory that must be used to access these galaxies. Sweet Sweet Galaxy, Sling Pod Galaxy, and Drip Drop Galaxy, more on Drip Drop later, thankfully require no spins. I'll come back to some of these mini galaxies if they have anything interesting going on. But for now, let's move on to Bowser Jr.'s Robot Reactor. Megaleg has you guiding the Chad Bullet Bills to destroy the Virgin Cages that aren't destructible otherwise. Only one spin to activate a launch star. It is technically possible to skip the launch star, but you need a spin to skip it anyway, so it's not worth it. Okay, we're done with the Terrace for now. Things only get harder from here. On to the next dome, the Fountain. Polestar Pad's first half is mostly made of pole stars, so for most of the level it's no issue getting from point A to point B. And of course, things spike up in difficulty with no warning once you reach the space station planet. There are four toads inside of crystals that you need to rescue in order for Captain Toad to come down and rescue you. Around these parts, we don't really like crystals or toads, so let's skip them both. In each of the four corners of this planet are these weird thin pedestals. Thankfully, they aren't so thin that we can't jump on them. It's not easy, and I mean it, this is not easy, but we can perform a position-perfect triple jump off this pedestal and spin at the peak of our jump to just barely reach the sling star, skipping two spins in the process. The same thing applies to pole star path speedrun, three spins. Camilla's airship attack has this bridge that we can easily skip with a well-placed long jump, and you can break this crate with a ground pound, surprise, surprise. The game also gives us shells now, which once picked up can only be thrown by spinning. This means that any boss involving shells automatically gives us a hefty spin count, right? Well, while this is true for enemies that are far away, such as these always spicy octopi, this is absolutely false if you run into an enemy with a shell. Skip this sling star with a triple jump and go on to fight Camilla. Jumping into the boss will deal damage to both you and the boss, so make sure there's a few spare coins lying around after every hit. Six spins. Tarantox's Tangled Web only has one unskippable launch star. Every other planet uses either pole stars or sling pods to traverse between areas, so only one spin. The secret star, Yoshi's Unexpected Appear- IS THAT YOSHI?! Isn't much different from the main star. We do exploit a weird quirk to gain enough star bits to feed the Hungry Luma, because otherwise we just don't have enough. Dying does not reset your star bit counter, so if we die a few times and reload star bits we've already collected, we can get just enough star bits to access Yoshi. This star is fairly manageable, and it's another easy one spin. Around this time is when we gain access to Prankster Comets, which shake up a level in some sort of way, such as having to race a cosmic version of yourself to determine who gets the shiny prize at the end of the race. These races are not in your favor because Cosmic Luigi's a cheater and can spin whenever he pleases. These stars are still easy, however, and every Cosmic Comet is doable in exactly zero spins. Battle Rock Barrage has a launch star and a screw switch, both unskippable. After that is a leisurely auto-scroll section that is easily traversable without any harm. Two spins. Breaking into the Battle Rock plays almost exactly the same as it does normally, with the key exception that you cannot throw bob-ombs. Meaning for every explosion, you have to take one damage. Be sure to watch your coin intake and you should be good. The Super Mario Galaxy level designers thought it'd be really funny to have a sling star launch you into a launch star, so that's cool. Why not just use the launch star? Whatever. One more spin than what should have been necessary. Once you take this warp pipe, it takes you to this inside area, which features walking bob bombs that cannot be picked up without spinning. That means to access the cannon here, you need one spin. But once you shoot out the cannon, that's it. You can't access the second cannon without another spin, so you not only have to break the crystal containing the Luma, but time your spin so you barely make it into the launch star before reaching the other side. Six spins. 
Collecting enough Starbits to gain access to Battle Rock's garbage dump is no issue. The minigame itself is relatively tough, though. You have to spin to throw the bob bombs because if you don't, you simply don't have enough time to take out all of the trash. You must throw four bob bombs at these yellow spots at the ground, and you can just stand there with the last one, since you need to wait for it to explode anyway. Six spins. Top Maniac in the Top Man Tribe has a pretty nifty Slingstar skip. This UFO is our destination, but it's a little bit too far to long jump or triple jump to. Instead, long jump towards the UFO, use this last pulse star to fling yourself in the opposite direction, and finally fling yourself back towards the UFO. You'll get just enough distance to enter the UFO's radius, and can continue on as normal. Starbits do a lot of the heavy lifting in this star. Starbits completely circumvent the top men's entire enemy design, and can be defeated without much effort by just shooting a funny shape and shoving them into the shocky shield. Where the starbits fling the top men is dependent on where the starbit hits the top man, so the wobbliness of the top men combined with my relatively shaky hands makes it a bit random as to where they get pushed. But it's doable. This 2D section has a few tricky jumps to skip some of these gravity shenanigans, but again, it's doable. After using these launch stars and destroying the battle rock, it's time to face off against Top Maniac. Top Maniac is generally considered one of the easier bosses in the game, but here you can't damage him without spinning. Top Maniac has some sort of anti-fun measures applied to his skin, so you have to defeat him the old-fashioned way. I'd recommend taking care of these top minis with Starbits first before jumping on Top Maniac and spinning him into the electrical barrier. It's inconsistent if he'll actually take damage sometimes, but with enough patience this star can be brought down to 7 spins. Top Maniac's Daredevil Run has us face Top Maniac once again. It's the exact same fight, but you can't take any damage. It's Top Maniac, therefore manageable. 3 spins. Hurry Scurry Galaxy contains a single, unskippable launch star. I know I could have grouped this level with the easier galaxies earlier, but I want to be sure all the bases are covered here. One spin. Here we are, the first Bowser level. What sort of challenges await us in our first encounter with the Koopa King himself? None actually, kind of underwhelming. The only thing worth mentioning is that the Bowser fights will always add a large chunk of spins, since you have to spin into Bowser multiple times to advance the fight. Pretty self-explanatory when you say it out loud. 7 spins. With Bowser being pushed over and another grand star under our belt, we can make our way to the kitchen, one of my personal favorite domes in the game. Will that opinion hold up after this challenge? Let's find out. Beach Bowl Galaxy for the most part isn't incredibly interesting in this challenge, but the first star's sunken treasure has a nice launch star skip. Normally you'd have to collect these star chips, and a few of them are even in crates which you need to spin to break underwater. And of course, there's an added spin for the launch star as well. Instead, don't even touch the water, and head over to this palm tree. Backflipping is enough to get on top of the tree itself, but to get to where the launch star takes you normally, you must do a near position and angle perfect triple jump to just barely grab the ledge of this cliff. Once we make our way to the top, we can now grab the star. Oh no, our arch nemesis, the crystal! They've become too powerful! These crystals that are encasing stars require two spins to break, which is a lot considering the point of this challenge is to not spin. But we can't grab the star otherwise, so this turns out to be a win for the crystal, sadly. Two spins. Passing the swim test. The goal of this star is to grab a gold shell and show it to the big penguin. Zero spins. The secret undersea cavern has a launch star in a cave that we can only enter by breaking open the entrance of the cave with a shell. But similarly to the Camella fight, we can just body slam into this wall to break into the cave. The star after this isn't hard in the slightest, but Mr. Star Crystal over here thought it'd be really funny to encase a star twice in the same galaxy. Three spins. Fast Foes on the Cyclone Stone is the same, except it starts you on the Cyclone Stone, so the first launch star is skipped completely. Two spins. The secret star while jumping up waterfalls, has a treasure chest you need to open with a shell, so one to open the chest and one to take this launch star. The waterfall planet has a moderately difficult triple jump to skip this sling star. Don't worry about racing the timer on the ice flower here. Defeating this prickly piranha nets you another one. The last two sling stars can't be skipped, so just take those and they put an ice flower and a crystal. How could they? Well actually, these diamond shaped crystals can be broken with a ground pound and thus we can thankfully do this star in four spins. Oh, this is no good. Every star in the ghostly galaxy starts you on this green star shroom, where you need to use a launch star to get to the actual level. Why not just start on the level? Whatever. Luigi in the Haunted Mansion has Luigi save Luigi from the Haunted Mansion. We have to activate this switch to defeat Boo, who carries a key, and we have to take this launch star to find that Luigi's trapped in a cage despite all his rage. 
These gates are impossible to go through without Boo Luigi, so you have to spin to turn invisible to get through these two gates. Five spins. A very spooky sprint has only two launch stars, and the titular spooky sprint makes heavy use of pole stars, so it isn't very hard, so it's two spins. Its secret star, Matter Splatter Mansion, only adds on an extra spin to break the stalagmite that contains a launch star. This also isn't very hard. Three spins. Beware of Boulder Guy's main gimmick is this cute little scrunkle called the Bombu. Spin into them and you'll wave them around until they explode, which is used to break open this path to a launch star. Getting hit by one also makes it look like it explodes, but it seems to be just a visual effect and actually does nothing. Oh well, there isn't much we can do to avoid these mandatory launch stars, except for this one that flings us into a star chip. Use the sling pod instead. After two more launch stars, we reach Boulder Geist. Despite often being proclaimed as the easiest boss in this entire game, he's incredibly stressful to fight in this challenge. You damage him by swinging three bombus into his face, which of course has you spinning in order to damage him. The catch for this challenge is, you aren't limited to holding one bombu, so if you wait for Boulder Guys to toss out three bombus onto the arena, you can swing them all directly into his face at once. And when you get to his hand phase is an entirely different story. His arms take two bombus to strike down, acting as a sort of defense to his already rocky exterior. You either have to herd five bombus into the same area to break through his defense, which is incredibly difficult due to how aggressive these things are and how often they get stuck outside the arena, or you have to wait, running around in circles until Boulder Geist puts his hands in the air and at the same time have three bombus readily available so you can plummet them right into his ugly mug. <sighs> Bust Boulder Guy's balls once and for all, and in just 11 spins, we've just beat the hardest boss of this entire run. Boulder Guy's Daredevil run is waiting for you on the other side. This boss in Daredevil mode took me 12 minutes to defeat him. It's incredibly time consuming and stressful, but it is possible. Four spins. Bubble Breeze Galaxy is a very well-known speed strat that you have likely done yourself. After taking the launch star, backflip onto these rocks and long jump to the right. Yeah, it's that easy. It's a wonder they didn't catch it during testing. This probably skips a spin somewhere, but to be honest, I've taken the skip so much I kinda forget what the normal path is like, so I'm bringing it up just in case. One spin. Bowie Base has this section midway through the level where you need to spin this screw to activate these moving platforms. Stationary platforms are able to get us to the top of the fortress just fine. The problem is this star chip that's inside one of these platforms. Luckily, Luigi can grab this star chip with his feet if he does a backflip near the bottom of the platform. These star chips spawn pole stars, and so we can get to the very end of the level without spinning. Frustratingly, when you get to the very end of the level, there's a screw here which you need to spin to get inside of the Pokeball. We were so close to greatness, and all it took was one screw. One spin. The green star is easy enough to get though, so that's a plus for this galaxy thankfully. Zero spins. Drip Drop Galaxy has you taking out these giant eels. Just swim into them with shells and manage your health wisely. Zero spins. Later along the line, we also unlock Bonefin Galaxy, which is just a harder version of Drip Drop Galaxy, but with a launch star at the start. Be sure to swim directly into Kingfin's bottom jaw. That's his weak point. One spin. Bowser Jr.'s airship armada uses cannons as its means of transportation, not launch stars, automatically making it my favorite Bowser level in this challenge. Spin this switch to move this platform, do a fancy triple jump to skip this Slink Star, and throw five shells into Bowser Jr. for a relaxing six-spin boss level. Relaxing compared to Boulder Geist, at least. And that's the kitchen done! But before we go into the next dome, the bedroom, we should talk about Luigi. Luigi will help you find three hidden stars across the game. This one in Good Egg necessitates a good triple jump. This one in Honey Hype has you do a front-facing slope climb. And this one in Battle Rock is basically just the first star in Battle Rock again. That's zero spins, zero spins, and two spins respectively. Alright, now let's move on to the bedroom. Dusty Garden Galaxy is home to these flowers, which help you glide across the wind. The only problem? They require spins to do so. You can also only activate them with a spin, so needless to say, if a level has these flowers, it's going to take a lot of spins. Even so, I did try to optimize the spin count as much as I could. Bunnies in the Wind only needs two spins for the first set of flowers, two for the second set, and three for the third set. Instead of going for this green planet, you should instead go for this orange one, and afterwards do a semi-precise triple jump to reach this one over here. Take this vine and defeat the prickly piranha. After the launch start, the only challenge left is to catch a bunny, which is no issue without spinning. Nine spins. 
The Dirty Tricks of Major Burrows. Two spins for this first set of flowers and three for the second set. Though getting to this planet with only three spins is pretty close. Next you faced off against your first mole. To defeat the mole, you need to ground pound close to them and spin into them. Jumping doesn't work. They have a helmet on. After taking the sling star to the next planet, the game throws three moles at you. You need to spin into all three to defeat them. But if you have astronomic luck, you can group two together and defeat both of them with one spin. I don't think it's possible to dig up all three in one spin, but if it is, I'm not doing it. It took forever for these guys to line up just to kill two at once. Three sounds like a pain. Don't take these pole stars. They are a trap and will actually cost you one spin to get off of this ring planet. They've been helping us this entire time, and now they're trying to stop us. Shady stuff. Once you reach this Bramble planet, grab this life mushroom just to be safe. Major Burrows is defeated the same way those moles were. You just have to do it three times. Don't miss a single spin or you will have to start the entire level over. 15 spins. Major Burrows' Daredevil run is just this boss fight again. Three spins. Dusty Garden's Gravity Scramble has you spinning three times into this flower set, and thankfully they only show up just this once. Don't worry if you don't grab the tip of this vine just in time. A backflip is just high enough that you can still make it in one spin. The same cannot be said for this vine. You must grab it in time or start over. Take a launch star to arrive at these disc planets and another to leave them. Now for some bad news. These gravity switches are required to advance through this series of weird gravity blocks, and it all ends in a damn star crystal! Annoyingly, this level is completable in 14 spins. The Golden Chomp has you destroy this titular Golden Chomp with an Invincibility Star, which only spawns after collecting all these question mark coins. One of these sadly adds an additional spin to reach it with this flower set, otherwise pretty much the same route to the Golden Chomp. Destroy it with the star to earn this star in 7 spins. Man, Gusty Garden does not have a good score under its belt. Hopefully the next one will be a lot more interesting. The Frozen Peak of Baron Burr starts with you chasing a penguin. This is meant to be a tutorial for ice skating, but we can't do that. Take a good guess why. It's possible to nab this penguin with this one weird trick. Doing consecutive long jumps is a good way to cover distance fast in this game, but the grace period between when you can perform another long jump before slowing down enough to switch to a backflip is surprisingly large, so you can wait about a whole second and usually still get another long jump in. You can also change your angle when you touch the ground, so what you can do is long jump, tilt the joystick in the direction you want to go next, and immediately do another long jump afterwards. It really seems like it shouldn't work, it's so silly to me. Catching the penguin with this one weird trick is a breeze, and now we get into the actual meat of the level. After this penguin, the star isn't all that different. Just make your way to Baron Burr, and ace the boss fight as usual. 8 spins. Taking this route to the right of this area leads to a secret star, conquering the summit. We need this fire flower to melt this snowman, can we get an F with the snowman guys? To steal its sling star to get to the next part of the summit. Instead of collecting this fire flower, we'll jump off the nearby wall up to this ledge. This snowman will opt to help you in your quest as long as you don't tell him your dirty little secret. Climb onto his head and backflip onto this slope and proceed the wall jump upwards. Climb the rest of the way and grab the golden strawberry at the top with only 5 spins. Freeze Flame's blistering core starts off with tragedy. You have to collect star chips to activate a launch star. And they're all inside of crystals. It can't be. They're becoming too powerful. We'll just have to show them who's who. Leaving the starting planet with six spins, we find ourselves inside the blistering core of Freeze Flame. The main attraction here is using fire flowers. By spinning, you can create fireballs to light torches to progress through this place. Most of the torches only raise platforms. So with clever movement, like backflipping onto this structure and long jumping to the next area, or wall jumping up these pillars down to this ledge, we can skip the use for said platforms, thus skipping the fire flower. These torches when lit remove this gate, and we can't just phase through solid walls. We need these torches to be lit this time. That's where these fire enemies come into play. By guiding a fire enemy to these torches using a few lava boosts to make sure he actually follows us, we can use this little guy to light the torches, and beat this level in 6 spins. Despite all the dread those crystals caused at the start, this ended up being one of my favorite stars in the entire challenge. Hot and Cold Collide starts off with another damn crystal! <clears throat> Break it and use the launch star. It's not worth getting worked up about. We have to spin into this valve to open this gate, but this valve can be skipped with a well-placed triple jump. There are no fire enemies on this planet, so the fire flower is mandatory. This last section is easy without spinning. It's just a lot less fun without ice skating. Push past that, and this star takes six spins. Soaring on the desert winds makes mild use of tornadoes. Whenever you get caught in one, you have to spin to escape it, so don't get caught unless you absolutely have to.
have to. Use one to get on this landform, and long jump to this lone tornado in the quicksand to get to this pipe. Nothing of note in this underground section, but they do end it in a sling star, into a pipe, into a launch star. That seems a bit redundant, doesn't it? Just use a pipe! Just the exact same thing! This tower has you climb using tornadoes. It uses four right here, and even throws in a sling star for good measure. Afterwards is a relaxing wall jump section, and when you reach the top, a star crystal. Great. 11 spins. Blasting through the sand has way too many launch stars. I tried to skip this one with a triple jump with no luck. I even tried luring some dry bones over here to see if I could do anything clever with them, but no. This one is also required. There's a starship in this crystal, and a starship in this chest. Use them to get to this flowing sand planet. Take the green path into this bonus room, and upon exiting, Luigi will say, and we can continue on with our merry way. These twisters aren't needed at all, so they more so act as obstacles to avoid. Ground pound the switch and make your way to the star. Six spins. Sandblast speed run is, once again, the same thing on a timer. Six spins. Treasure of the Pyramid is accessed through a hungry Luma, so you'll need star bits. There's a hidden invincibility star under this disc planet in the center of this ring planet. So use that to destroy these boulders and head inside the pyramid. Here you have to navigate a shifting sand maze and find five silver stars inside of crystals. Collect them all and beat this star in 7 spins. This star gives us access to the Trial Galaxies, which we'll talk about in just a second. Sunbaked Sandcastle starts us on this rising platform. You can get rid of this chicken by shooting a star bit at it, which makes this part a lot easier. Now we collect some star chips. One's in a chest, the rest are free. This storm bush contains another mandatory launch star, which leads us to this duo of planets. One with a pokey, one with coconuts. You're supposed to use these sling stars to travel between planets, and spin a coconut onto the opposite planet to defeat the pokey. As we've seen many times in this challenge, however, a triple jump works just fine. Defeat the pokey and then the final challenge is presented to us. Ground pounding this crate to reveal a pipe is no problem. What is a problem is that this next crate was smart enough to anticipate a ground pound, and decided the best course of action was to grow big and strong. This thing's top is right against the ceiling, and we can't ground pound the crate from the side, only the top. You may notice there's a very tiny gap between the crate and the ceiling, however. That's our ticket out of here. By standing next to the crate, running to the right, and side flipping near the left of this square pattern on the floor, we get pushed into the ceiling! Something about the ceiling being slanted janks out the game, I guess. From here, we have one frame to jump in thin air and go right over the crate. I decided to spare this crate because I respected its attempt at stopping me, despite it being fruitless. There are two more crates up ahead. These ones are practically touching the ceiling, so it's impossible to go over them. Break your way through these crates to find the star. 11 spins. You might be wondering why I didn't just go around these crates considering we just clipped out of bounds to pass the first crate. The thing is, the game detects your shenaniganry and decides to put you on a permanent timeout. One skipped crate will have to do. If you ground pound this stump on the thornbush planet and collect all the music notes, you get taken to the secret star, bullet bill on your back. Just guide the bullet bill into the cage containing the star and you're set. Four spins. Now let's talk about the trial galaxies. Not much to say about them, to be honest. They all involve motion control gimmicks, which actually remove your ability to spin altogether, usually. All of these galaxies, including the secret final bonus level, are easily completable in zero spins. The exception being Bubble Blast Galaxy. This star has you collecting five star chips while in a bubble, and after every star chip, you return to the central planet with a sling star, totaling in six spins. Honey Climb Galaxy is a B Luigi-centric galaxy, and as such is light on the spins, but we do travel to different planets using two launch stars. Two spins. Big Mouth Galaxy starts you out next to a golden treasure chest on a shell. A normal shell won't open the chest, so you must venture into the depths of Big Mouth. Eventually you'll come across a blockhead of bricks, so you'll need to bring the normal shell to get past it. There are star chips to collect at the bottom of the ocean, but if you press the jump button on the surface of the water, you get a high boost out of the water and into the water. Now you just pick up the golden shell. Oh, the shell destroys it. If a shell can destroy a golden shell, why can't it destroy a golden treasure chest? No problem, just ram into this jellyfish to get rid of the shell, and wall jump up to this ceiling water instead. Now just take the golden shell back to the start and spin to open the chest. One spin. It's time for the second Bowser level. If we're going off of the last Bowser level, this one shouldn't be an issue. And it isn't up until this part. There are Lumas trapped inside crystals. Saving the Lumas and succumbing to the crystal's twisted demands grants us some staircases to climb. Don't associate and just triple jump up instead. The first triple jump is easy, the next one's a little more demanding, but nothing too difficult. The Bowser fight's almost exactly the same as in Star Reactor, but Bowser has learned how to spin. Just spin him back and steal another Grand Star. Seven spins. The engine room is next on our list, and I'm gonna be honest, 
This is one of my overall least favorite domes. Let's just hope this challenge brings a little more joy to it. Star Bunnies on the Hunt is a star chip level. Use this dandelion or a front facing slope climb to get to the upper area. Take the L and get this bee mushroom. Now just buzz around and collect all the star chips, and afterwards take the launch star to catch the bunny at the end. One spin. In Cataquack to the Skies, we can skip right to this first launch star by using the front facing slope climb once again to obtain the bee mushroom. Now go over to this upper ledge near the sling star and fly up to the cliffside holding this launch star and take it. The next bundle of planets use Cataquacks as means of traversal, but one of them has you flying into another mandatory launch star. Use the Cataquack to fling yourself into this last bee mushroom, and it's an easy two spin star. After your front facing slope climb at the start, behind this tree is the secret star, the bell on the big tree. Just ring the bell on the big tree and collect all of the music notes for a zero spin star. When it rains, it pours is incredibly straightforward. Get this bee mushroom and climb to the top of the tower. Just be sure to line yourself up with this rightmost crack on this rock, and immediately afterwards jump, so you grab the very tip of the spine. This spine is super precise to grab on efficiently for some reason, but once you grab it, the boss at the top is super easy and is taken out with three ground pounds, not spins, making this star possible in one spin. So you slide Galaxy's first two stars, going after Guppy and faster than a speeding penguin, have you swim in a circle. Both are admittedly kinda boring but they net us a zero spin score, so who am I to complain? The Silver Stars of Sea Slide has you collecting, you guessed it, Silver Stars. This one of the Star Shroom can be accessed with this nearby cannon, but in order to get back you need some clever use of momentum with this Pole Star. Jump into the background and use the Pole Star to gain enough speed to make it back safely. This island in the center has a Silver Star, and there's no way to get on or off it without spinning sadly. Use the Valve to make this weird watery tentacle arise from this grate, and use the Launch Star to get back. Two spins. The secret star, Hurry He's Hungry, is accessed through a Hungry Luma. Man, this galaxy does not have very creative names. Usually Hungry Lumas transform into launch stars, so you'd think this star requires one spin, but actually you can use this cannon to get to the Hungry Luma planet. In fact, it doesn't even transform into a launch star. As uncreative as this galaxy is, it sure has been nice to us in this challenge. This planet is just Hurry Scurry Galaxy again, and as such is easy. Zero spins. Toy Time Galaxy, similar to Ghostly Galaxy, starts us on this planet for every star. I'm willing to give this one a pass, however, just because riding on these trains is a lot more fun. First up is Heavy Metal Mecha Bowser. On this planet, you need to unscrew this screw to gain access to this launch star. I tried to get up on top of the structure, but even with spinning, I wasn't able to. There's some sort of invisible wall preventing you from having fun. So this spin is required. Now we're introduced to the Spring Mushroom. As common as it is for people to hate on this thing, it does give us a load of extra height, and outright removes the ability to spin. So it's incredibly useful in this challenge. Use it to get up here, and to get up here. Now on to Mecha Bowser. These screw switches unlock a Sling Star for us, so we need to screw them both in and take the Sling Star. But once we've gained some more height on this giant robot, we can long jump onto this thing's left arm and skip a good portion of this boss. Hey, there's even a 1-up here. Who knew? Wait for the arm to lower to get on top of the claw, and wait for it to rise to long jump onto this rotating spiked collar. Grab the spring mushroom, and Mecha Bowser is as good as done. 8 spins. Luigi Meets Mario tasks us with collecting more star chips. One is too high to reach even with a triple jump, so spin the screw switch on the other side to reach it and free this star chip from the Crystal Menace. This launch star lets us finally meet Mario for the first time in this entire run. The lava makes this relatively scary, but it's not incredibly difficult to collect these silver stars and make our way back to the actual star. 4 spins. Collecting enough star bits and feeding this hungry luma takes us to the flip switch chain, which is focused on avoiding obstacles and activating flip switches. Needless to say, it's fairly easy. 2 spins. Fast Foes of Toy Time starts us out on this flip switch planet, skipping the use for the previous launch stars. 0 spins. Fencing down Cake Lane makes heavy use of the spring mushroom, so there's nothing that's super interesting in terms of this challenge. Take these launch stars and blow out the five candles on this cake planet to fight the boss at the end. It's themed around the spring mushroom and therefore adds no additional spins, making this a 9 spin level. Sand Spiral Galaxy has this frustratingly close long jump at the start, but it's either impossible or so precise it's practically TAS only. Take the sling star to get into the sand spiral itself. I recommend using the bee mushroom, as if you take it to the end of the level you can just fly over to the central moon. One spin. Bowser Jr.'s Lava Reactor has a Bullet Bill Guide section to free a launch star, and this part where you need to spin these coconuts to defeat the Octopi to spawn another launch star. You can spin two coconuts at once to take them both out with one spin. After this launch star is a rematch with King Caliente. He's pretty much the exact same fight as in Good Egg Galaxy, only you need to spin seven coconuts instead of six. Don't miss, and this grand star is reclaimed in ten spins. 
And that's the engine room. Again, not my favorite dome, but it gave us relatively few mandatory spins, so that's a win in my book. We actually unlocked two domes from here, the gateway being the one we do first due to its short length. So let's get to it. Gateway's purple coins gives us a new power-up that's only used once in the entire game. Using it on the observatory doesn't count. That's right, it's the red star. With this power-up, you can fly by spinning. You need to fly in order to obtain these aerial purple coins. So use one spin to get them all, being sure not to miss a single one, and use backflips to get the rest that are on the houses in these weird rocks. One spin. Boo's Boneyard Galaxy has you rematch against the spooky speedster. A spin is required to pass through this wall. And after that, it's just a good old-fashioned race between Boo Luigi and the spooky speedster that needs no spinning at all. One spin. And yeah, that's the gateway. Yeah, I told you it was short, but that just leaves one more dome, and it might be the hardest one yet, given that it's the last area of the game. At last, we tackle the garden. We've made it this far. Let's do this. The underground ghost ship starts us out on a deserted beach, and our mission is to explore the deep, dark crevices of this abandoned cave. But in order to do that, we first need to light these two torches to lower this gate. You would do this by using the cannon to shoot to this octopus planet, getting this fire flower, and using the sling star to get back to this beach to finally light these torches. But they give us a cannon, so we're going to make use of that instead. If you aim the cannon right about here, the top of the reticle aligning with this cyan-colored triangle, and this sort of gumdrop-shaped gap between the right of the reticle and this red part of the umbrella, Luigi will be able to violate this yellow toad's personal space. Crouch down and walk into Toad, and he will deservingly push Luigi through the floor and into a body of water. Seriously, Luigi. Kinda rude. Now swim along this path until you fall into the abyss. If you go too far left, you'll perish, and too far right, you'll clip back into bounds. But with just the right angle, you'll be in the out-of-bounds area of this cave. This trick not only skips the need for the Fire Flower, but also skips these two otherwise unavoidable levers. We arrive at the ghost ship only to fight Camella. It's the same fight as in Space Junk, but we do need to throw one shell at Camella, because she lurks behind this magical barrier. After that, body slam the rest of the way into the star. One spin. Ghost Ship Daredevil Run unfortunately requires you to throw every shell at Camilla, as body slamming damages both you and the boss, and in a mission where you can only take one damage, that's a little bit of a no-go. Four spins. Boo in a Box is a weird one. At first I tried going out of bounds, but as it turns out, the launch star is only activated after you blow up the sunken ship. And you can't just run into these mines either. For whatever reason, something about swimming into these mines instead of throwing the shell causes a weird quirk where the mines don't actually cause a chain explosion. Throw the shell into the mines with all the frustration you can muster, and take the launch star into the boo box. This puzzle revolves around revolving the gravity inside this cube to eventually make your way to the side with this crystal stuck on the wall. Skip all that nonsense and wall jump into a spin to break the crystal with style. Now lure the boo into the light to nab this star. Three spins. Bubble Blast Off starts off the same way as the underground ghost ship, but instead of lowering a gate, these torches give us an ice flower, which we need to climb these water spouts. This cannon is blocked by a mole boss, so rain on his parade and wash that stinker out. We're going to skip this fire flower again by aiming here where the reticle center is divided by this moving yellow block. As soon as the block starts to move down, fire away. Luigi should safely land on the yellow block as it moves upward. This level uses these bubble blasters to traverse between planets, hence the star's name. So this star is done in zero spins. Neat. Guppy in the underground lake just has you following Guppy again. It's as easy as it was in Sea Slide. Zero spins. Infiltrating the Dreadnought. Whew, oh boy. After this first launch star, you're tasked with defeating three Goombeetles. Goombeetles are defeated by spinning into them and jumping on them afterwards. Like we've seen with many areas where enemies need to be defeated, you can spin two at once to take out two beetles with one spin. I tried doing it with all three of them, but one always wakes up before I get to it, so two spins here. This pipe leads us inside the Dreadnought, where we do some fun platforming up to here where the platforming gets unfun. There are gravity switches scattered all along the main path, and after a while they lead to this warp pipe which brings you outside. Warp pipes in Super Mario Galaxy function a little differently from other Mario games. Instead of standing on a pipe and crouching to enter it, the game automatically makes you enter as long as you're touching the lip of the pipe, even if it's upside down. Do a triple jump starting on this moving wall and ending on this piece of raised ground. At the very peak of your jump, wall jump, and at the peak of that, perform a spin and hold left. The camera will flip out, and when it does, hold right. You have successfully entered the pipe while upside down. This might just be the most precise trick in this entire challenge, so once you've got it, 
be super careful. Take the launch star to this grassy planet and ride on these laser platforms to the star. Six spins. The only roadblock in Dreadnought's colossal cannons are these two octopi and this preceding launch star. The rest is an auto scroll with some mild challenges, but nothing scary. Two spins. Revenge of the Top Men Tried isn't any different from how it's normally played, aside from using star bits to destroy these Top Men as we did in Battle Rock. There are five required launch stars and Top Maniac is defeated in three spins. Just don't miss swinging Top Men into the electrical barriers like I did several times. The same applies to Top Man Tribe speedrun, but it's a lot more stressful this time around. Eight spins for both. Dreadnought's Garbage Dump is just another garbage minigame. There are six yellow target spots instead of five this time, so we of course need one extra spin to take out the garbage, and afterwards we can just stand around with a comically oversized bomb in our hands for this last target. Five spins. The sinking lava spire has so many launch stars in it, we have to go through seven of them just to reach the end. I tried to climb the volcano with front-facing slope climbing for two hours to maybe skip one of them, but I had no luck. I know you can climb the volcano using backwards slope climbing, but something about facing towards the volcano just doesn't pan out for some reason. If anyone wants to try to climb this thing for more than two hours and reach this sling star, go ahead. If you manage to, leave a video in the comments and maybe I'll pin it. You can thankfully skip this sling star by long jumping to the next planet. At the sinking spire, use this shortcut to reach the star quicker and backflip onto and off of this question block to save a little more time. Break the star crystal to get the star. Lava Spire Daredevil Run is the same thing with only one health point, which means if a way to climb the volcano is found, that'll skip two launch stars all in all. For now, these stars are both 9 spins. Burning Tide is access after the launch star off of this volcano planet. Use the exploit of dying over and over to continuously collect the same star bits, and once you have 80, head back and feed the Luma. The secret star is no trouble after this point. 5 spins. Through the Meteor Storm requires 4 launch stars throughout the level. Nothing else is really of note here. 4 spins. Fiery Dino Piranha. This level isn't of any issue until this section where you need to ice 5 fire enemies. Use Starbus to cool them down and kick them to eradicate them and take the launch star that appears. Navigate around these fireballs that have way bigger hitboxes than they should, and eventually you'll reach this moving platform paradise. This section isn't difficult at all, but be sure you grab this life mushroom here, and don't take any damage. Once you reach this area with way too many sinking platforms, this is where the life mushroom will come in clutch. Long jump over to this other set of way too many sinking platforms to skip these sling stars. What proceeds is a rematch with Dino Piranha, but this time he's on fire and still living somehow. It's the same fight as in Good Egg Galaxy, except you need to time the hits to his tail or risk getting a third degree burn and a first degree hurt feelings. 8 spins. Snowcap Galaxy starts you out with two spins, one to open a chest and another to take a launch star. The star is given to you only after you catch three bunnies. Hit these flip switch panels hiding under the snow to unlock a fire flower. Break these two snowmen, one has a bunny, the other has a shell. The shell unlocks this chest containing another bunny. This last bunny is hiding inside this tiny hole in the ground. Nab them all for a seven spin score. With everything done, we can finally travel to Bowser's Galaxy Reactor. And following the trend of Bowser levels being easy, this level is kind of underwhelming, at least for this challenge. The singular launch star is all that's standing between you and Bowser. Bowser this time needs 15 spins to take him down. It's ridiculous, but if you don't beat Bowser, you don't beat the game. Plus, I think it's a well-deserved break from the stunts we've pulled, especially in these last few levels. With Bowser defeated in 16 spins, the last Grand Star obtained, and the entire universe destroyed, the Super Mario Galaxy Minimum Spin Challenge isn't over yet. But don't worry, there isn't much left, especially after the universe exploded. Beating the game once unlocks purple coin comets in every main galaxy. A large portion of these are levels where you either go around the entire stage looking for purple coins, or small obstacle courses containing 150 purple coins, where you only need to collect 100 of them. A lot of these purple coin challenges are possible either without any trouble or using techniques we've already previously discussed. So for the sake of time, this video is already long enough. The purple coin comets in Honey Hive, Space Junk, Battle Rock, Beach Bowl, Ghostly, Gusty Garden, Sea Slide, Toy Time, and Deep Dark Galaxy are all easily doable without spinning. Good Egg Galaxy is an incredibly linear introduction to purple coin missions. Just follow the purple coins, break the crystals as necessary, take these launch stars around this group of planets to collect the star. 8 spins. Freeze Flame Galaxy is the first exploration purple coin comet worth talking about. This purple coin above this rock jutting out of the water can only be reached with a backflip and a ground pound. After getting every purple coin in this lower area, take the route to the secret star section. Break the snowman and take the launch star as usual. 
and collect all the purple coins in the proceeding area. Be sure not to miss any. You can't get back here without spinning. Once you reach the summit, gather your courage and long jump down to these platforms. Instead of taking the Sling Star, long jump to the right and very slightly down. This is the arena where Baron Burr was fought. There are two purple coins behind these crystals. A while ago, we would just see these crystals and give up. But today is different. By backflipping into the crystals for several minutes, we can clip inside and collect the two purple coins. And by spending several more minutes backflipping against the crystals, we can get back out. I have no clue why or how this happens. All I know is that sometimes you face the crystals and other times you don't. After grabbing the rest of the coins in this area, grab this ice flower and make your way down onto these water spouts. Now use this texture on the rocky wall as a reference point to initiate a ground pound. You want to activate a ground pound when you're above the left part of this wiggle on the wall. If positioned correctly, you'll grab all of these purple coins on the way down, skipping this sling star entirely. The level from here is a breeze. Take the sling star up to this ledge and do not miss these purple coins, or you have to spend 15 minutes backflipping again. Grab the star, and you just got through this level in only 5 spins. Dusty Doom Galaxy has a bunch of purple coins too high in the air to reach without one of these twisters. In total, you'll need about 10 spins inside of these twisters to reach these purple coins. Getting onto this swamp is a little tricky. Only a triple jump can reach the swamp's head, but there's barely any space to perform one. What you want to do is start here where this twister usually guards this ledge. Run a bit, and before jumping, angle yourself towards the swamp and perform two more jumps. The angle here really doesn't seem like it should work, but it does. It's impossible to grab all of these purple coins in one twister flight, so grab the two closest ones with a tight backflip and use the twister to get the farthest one. The rest of the level is no different than a normal run. 10 spins. Hey guys, it's my editor here. While editing this video, I noticed that for one of the twister spins, I ended up going over one purple coin. So I went back and did the star again. And lo and behold, you can actually get this purple coin without having to spin in this specific tornado twice, lowering the count to 9 spins instead of 10. Man, it's a good thing that this challenge is individual level. Oh shit, I didn't say that in the rules earlier. F Gold Leaf Galaxy has this set of precise parkour tricks about midway through. Backflip up here to nab this singular purple coin, and triple jump here to skip this sling star. This next sling star is unavoidable, and be sure you grab the top of this vine. Two spins. Dreadnought Galaxy is yet another auto-scroller. Take this launch star at the end to beat this star in one spin. Melty Molten Galaxy has some purple coins inside the volcano, so if anyone finds a way to climb this thing without spinning, it actually saves four spins overall. Alas, this purple coin comet takes three spins to beat. And with that, that is every single star in Super Mario Galaxy done in what I believe to be the minimum amount of spins required. Our final score? 457 spins. Of those 457, 243 3 are gameplay spins, and 214 are meta spins. That seems like a big number, and it is, but considering how much work it took to get down to this particular number, I'm satisfied with it. 34 stars were possible to obtain without spinning once, and if you guys managed to save any spins, please let me know. It's incredibly possible that I overlooked some strategies in the making of this video. But for now, the Super Mario Galaxy Minimum Spin Challenge is completed. Oh, and here's the graph I used to keep track of all of this, in case anyone's curious. Uh, hey, thanks for watching this far. Sorry if this video was a little weird. This is my first attempt at writing a script, and also my first attempt at doing a voiceover of a script, so it might be a little rough around the edges. But I still wanted to put this video out there just because I thought it was interesting. And who knows, maybe one of you out there is interested in this type of stuff as well. I want to give shoutouts to GameChamp3000, Mayro, and Particular Mushroom for inspiring me to make this video in the first place. Their channels will be linked in the description. Those transitional pieces between galaxies were done with a website called noclip.website. It was made by a YouTuber who goes by the name of Jasper. Their channel will also be linked in the description below. If you like this video, consider leaving a like. I can't realistically ask you to subscribe though, because this video is probably a one and done on this channel. But if it does well enough, I might cover the second game, so... Uh, who knows? Well, that's all for now at least. Thank you for watching until the end. And, goodbye!